So for me personally, the blockchain has two main ingredients, two main technical ingredients. So one ingredient is cryptography. And when I say cryptography, I really mean asymmetric cryptography. I'll explain in a second what that is. And the other ingredient is so-called distributed systems. But these are the two main things. If you understand these two things, then basically understand all the technical details of, the, of blockchain or Bitcoin for that matter. So now both these things have in common so-called transactions. So a transaction is something you already know from daily life. This is when you want to send money to somebody. This is basically taking an input. This is your current account where you want to send money from and it's producing an output. This is who you sent the money to. And these transactions, they have to be signed. So they have to be clear that somebody wanted to do this transaction. The person who owns the funds on the input side that it wants to do this transaction to send money to the output side to buy something. And the transactions have to be ordered. One has to say which transactions actually happened and in what order did they happen. And these two ingredients basically help us to do these two things. So on the asymmetric cryptography, this is a really great invention from the 1970s. And what Bitcoin, for instance, is using is elliptic curves. Or other things that are used in the internet, something like discrete logarithms. Oh. Discrete logarithms. But these are a bit difficult mathematical concepts. I cannot explain them in a few seconds, basically, or a few minutes. So instead, uh, what I'm going to use here is just multiplication, which is the simplest concept which already has some of the features that these concepts have. So multiplication is nothing else, nothing you don't know from primary school. Basically, you have two numbers, something like three times five, and you multiply them to the product to 15. Now, in this direction, multiplication is very easy, very simple to do. Uh, however, if the numbers get larger and larger, it's still easy in this direction, but it's very hard in this direction. If you make these numbers sufficiently long, then computers cannot figure out the factors of this product anymore. So these values, they have names. This side here is actually the secret key. That's what you want to keep for yourself. That's your secret to make sure that you can sign such a transaction that nobody else understands this. And this is the public key. This is something you want to tell everybody. Everybody can know this value here, but nobody should know the factors that made this value. So with this secret key, you can come and sign this transaction in a digital way. This is not like a normal kind of signature, even though people sometimes write it like this. But you really make a computation. You put the secret key and you put the information about the transaction together in some mathematical way. I'm not going to explain this. It's a bit more complicated. And with this, this transaction is signed then. And then everybody who knows the public key, and basically everybody should know your public key, can just check whether this signature is actually valid. The second part is about distributed systems. So what you also want to do is you want to know which of these transactions actually happened, which are actually, you know, should be in the system, and in what order are they in the system. So you want to order these transactions. We have now many of these transactions. And we want to say which one was before the other transaction. You could think of a single computer to decide these things. A single computer could check these signatures and it could decide on the order of these things. But a single computer is not fault tolerant. It could crash or somebody could take over the single computer and then it's not safe anymore to use a single computer. So what you do here is you basically use many machines, many computers, which are connected by some kind of network like the internet. And together they make sure that even if some of them are really bad computers that for maliciously want to, you know, destroy the system, that the good guys, in some sense, uh, are in majority and they can prevent this. And there's two classic ways to do this. So one is called consensus. 
or there's other names to it. It's an important concept in distributed system. There's also something known as Byzantine agreement and you know consistency and so on. And here you have a, a, a bunch of computers, a couple of machines, let's say 10 or something like this, and together they make sure that any bad guys among them cannot have the majority. However, this is usually a closed set of machines, just a small set of machines. And there's another concept which uses proof of work. And with this concept, you try to achieve the same thing. You have many more machines that can try to work together to figure out which transactions happened in what order. Everything seems super easy the way I explain it here, but of course this is not the whole story, right? So to really, you know, nail all the little details for these uh, asymmetric cryptography schemes, this is pretty difficult to get a signature onto the transaction. It's not trivial, I would say. And also here, you know, how to really do this, I basically just explained the goals. I didn't tell you how you do it, right? What the protocols are that make this happen. These are all, you know, serious research questions. Both of these parts are, are very influential. They're both very important in computer science. So uh, in computer science, there's something called the Turing Award, which is the equivalent of a, of a Nobel Prize, essentially, for, for computer science. And both parts have won Turing Awards, like Nobel Prizes in computer science. This invention, uh, when it came up in, in the 70s, this is really one of the totally groundbreaking ideas, right? It will change society for sure in many domains. It already has changed society in the, same, in the sense that the internet is in some sense a secure place that you can you know, make transactions on the internet in a way that nobody can tamper with you. And it uses exactly these concepts. It uses exactly discrete logarithms, elliptic curves, stuff like that. Or actually also multiplication, I should say. That's used in this uh, RSA algorithm. So what's the new thing about it? What's the hype about it right now? The new thing, in my opinion, is that you put these things together. But not only that, even that maybe has been done before. The new thing was that the, this person who invented Bitcoin, in some sense, put it out there in the wild. He, he had people use it. He programmed it and he had this code open and people could actually download it and use it. And that kind of started this whole, you know, unexpected wave where people start to use the systems, try to understand and try to improve them. And there's a new interest in this topic. And uh, th that's kind of the, the innovation here. It's one of the most amazing things in science that happened in the last hundred years, that this thing is actually possible, that you can digitally sign transactions or other kinds of information so that you can prove to people that you actually signed this. Uh, it's much more secure than these, you know, curvy, wriggly signatures we usually use in our everyday life. And it probably will replace those things soon enough. <laughs>